During the 1980s, I was a member of the American Stock Exchange, trading options on the floor from my own account. I'd execute my own orders, trading on the floor with other members of the exchange, and we'd write the counterparty details on our buy and sell tickets, as you see here. The Amex was originally called the Curb Exchange because orders were sent from offices in the building shown in the picture down to the street by hand signals, executed with other brokers on the street or curb, and the executions relayed back to the office from the curb, again, by hand signals. In 1921, the Curb Exchange moved inside to a building of their own and was renamed the American Stock Exchange. For many years, the Amex was second only to the New York Stock Exchange. The Amex was eventually surpassed by the NASDAQ and was merged into the NYSE in 2008. This building is now empty. This was the interior of the, new, of the Amex. Note the high ceilings to keep the noise down. The ceilings were decorated with 24 karat gold leaf. When they redid the gold leaf, as a member, I was personally assessed $4,400 as my share of the cost. That was almost enough to buy a brand new compact car in those days. This was the busiest location on the Amex where options on the major market index were traded. The major market index and futures on the major market index played a pivotal role in the events of October 20th, 1987, the most perilous day in the financial markets. Most people don't realize that percentage-wise, the single day decline in 1987 was almost twice as much as the single day decline in 1929. <laughs> the 1929 crash was a major contributor to the Great Depression, but after 1987, there was not even a minor recession. So why was the 1987 crash worse? I believe that the, the fact that information traveled so much faster by 87 that computers and algorithms began to replace human decision making and new financial instruments all contributed to turning the stock market into a commodity. Commodity trading is notorious for volatility, which is why commodity exchanges have limits on daily price movements. When you hear about the price of oil or gold in the news, it's the price for immediate delivery. But producers and consumers of commodities often need to deliver or receive them at a future date. Future exchanges exist so that buyers and sellers can determine the price for future delivery dictated by supply and demand. The movement towards the stock exchanges of commodity began in 1976 with the first stock index fund. But these shares traded only once a day. In 1982, futures on the S&P 500 were introduced. These futures provided a way for money managers to immediately and cheaply increase or decrease their exposure to the market. In 1987, a concept called portfolio insurance swept Wall Street. The theory was that by selling futures in predetermined amounts and prices, managers could limit their exposure in a falling market. But it was based on a fallacy of infinite liquidity and assumed that portfolio insurance process itself had minimal impact on, stock, on the f stock market. Liquidity is a critical component of financial markets. A liquid market is one where large amounts of stock can be sold quickly without a significant impact on stock price. In comparison, real estate is not liquid. How much of a hit would you take if you had to sell your house by the end of the day? Without liquidity, financial markets freeze up. Without liquidity, people lose faith in a market. In an illiquid market, if you try to sell even a small amount of stock, at whatever price the market will bear, you have no idea what price you're going to get. The result is panic. Events in the days leading up to the crash set the stage, but many believe that portfolio insurance was the real culprit. Dumping of stock futures by portfolio insurers led to massive sa stock sales by arbitrageurs, which led to more dumping of futures by portfolio insurance in a deadly feedback loop. On the morning of October 20th, there were rumors that major Wall Street firms were bankrupt. The Federal Reserve issued a statement meant to reassure the markets. The initial reaction was positive, and the market recovered almost half the previous day's loss when it opened. But after the initial burst of enthusiasm, selling returned. As stock prices declined to the levels of the previous day, there were no buyers, and trading was halted in many stocks. Banks were unwilling to lend more money to Wall Street, and it looked as though the financial markets were about to collapse. The rescue came from an unlikely place. 
The major market index was an Amex creation that mimicked the Dow Jones Industrials. From the chart, you can see that in just a few days, the major market index was cut almost in half, and the price fluctuation on October 20th was almost as great as the crash day itself. As trading halt in a major mar stocks and mar futures markets, as insignificant major market index futures continue to trade. Looking at the long red arrow, you can see a 35% rally occurred in just a few minutes. This created a huge demand from arbitrageurs for the stocks in that index, which caused the entire market to recover. Many people believe that the Federal Reserve was behind this rally by guaranteeing a few traders that the Fed would absorb any losses. Nobody knows for sure. But after this improbable rally, the only news reported was that Dow had posted a record gain on that day. Now, could a similar algorithm-driven crash occur again? Consider the so-called flash crash of May 7, 2010. This minute-by-minute minute chart shows that in just three minutes, the Dow dropped 4% which today would be a 1,000-point drop in, four, in three minutes. By comparison, the Dow has not had a 3% pullback this entire year. Years later, there's still no explanation for the flash crash. If you accept my conjecture as to why 1987 crash was worse than 1929 and consider the mystery of the 2010 flash crash, where does that leave us? Currently, 70% of all stock trading occurs from computerized trading. Elon Musk and others have worried that the possibility of catastrophes occurring from the reliance on artificial intelligence. Thank you.